Hello everybody and welcome to this video on STEM. So STEM reported earnings last week. Many of you in the comments section have asked me to cover it. So here it is. So let me just a little background about, about STEM. Um, I own a teeny tiny bit of STEM, but it, I never got to build a meaningful position of any kind. I, uh, I don't sweat the stock. I, mean, I never sweat stock prices, but I know it's significantly down from when I bought it, but I don't sweat it because I, I never, never built anything meaningful in STEM. That's also why perhaps I don't follow it as closely as some of my other stocks. Uh, the reason why I, I didn't buy more STEM is because literally every single overstock that I love has been on sale for one year plus. And as a result of that, you know, if we're in the height of a bull market and I saw a stock like STEM at the height of a bull market when everything is expensive and STEM stays this cheap, then I would be all over STEM. But right now we have so much innovation that is in a fire sale. But it's kind of like you have to decide which one you like you like the best. And my guess is that when we get to the bull market, STEM will not be at this fire these fire sale prices anymore. That would be my my guess because because STEM as as a very unique positioning um, to be one of the uh, competitor of Tesla in the administration of these battery energy storage systems that are front of the meter and behind the meter that corporations are getting installed utilities are getting installed these systems right we have we have we have the mega packs the mega packs get the lion's share of the coverage and they're obviously sold by Tesla. But there's many Chinese version of these mega packs. And there's also Fluence, which is more of an American made. It's going to be an American made version of that mega pack. They're building a factory uh, in the US, that competitor of STEM. But nonetheless, once these uh, systems are installed, they're going to be managed by software. And there's two key soft key pieces of software in the field. It's the Athena software, which belongs to STEM, and it is Auto Bidder, Tesla Energy in general, but including Auto Bidder, which belongs to Tesla. And of course, STEM as a competing product to uh, Tesla's Auto Bidder and to Tesla Energy. And STEM is in is in this very interesting position because it is an installer of mega packs, right? It installs mega packs as well as the Chinese quote unquote copies, right? And much of their business, um, much of their main revenue is due to their connection that they have to these Chinese makers of mega packs and the installation of these mega packs, these Chinese copies of mega packs. So, anyways, very uh, high growth field, uh, a field that has tremendous tailwinds coming from all over the place, all of the tailwinds, you know, they got, the, they, they're, they're going to get the IRA subsidies, right? They have the clean energy movement. They have the revolution of energy. They have the stabilization of the grid. It's like, it's at the center of so many mega trends, which is what has attracted me to this stock in the first place. So let's talk briefly about the numbers so when you see uh, when you see the numbers revenue growth has been somewhat disappointing we're at 34 percent year over year well you know you're gonna tell me well this is great what i mean this is great yes it's great but they were predicted to grow much more than that of course there has been a slowdown in all of these investments due to you guessed it the current interest rate environment so this, these stocks, they're like a spring coil in my view. When interest rates drop, demand will pick back up and it'll be quicker. But there's also probably something about how quickly they can deliver because they obviously um, install these in the real world and it takes a lot of time, right? Projects, the contracts, as you see, and when they define their booking, they're executed over 6 to 24 months. Uh, that, that's, that's a long period. And the contracted backlog is actually when they go out and install. So the way to look at it is, bo is bookings is the furthest away from revenue. Then you have a contracted backlog and then you have the actual revenue. And this is a company that roughly is on track of for 500-ish million dollars in revenue a year. This quarter, last quarter, was 134 million right and uh, actually q3 was pretty good in q3 the, the, the bookings so right at the top of the funnel for the revenue the, bu the bookings uh, nicely rebounded uh, in q2 the stock went down quite a bit when they saw those bookings go, go down and it, it quite nicely re rebounded and so you know 
this type of storage system is the future. It's uh, this, this stock is at the heart of a mega trend, and it is the future. And as they say on their presentation, you know, uh, demand demand is resilient despite rising interest rate. I mean, it's true. Plus forty four percent year over year is still great, uh, but I mean, interest rates have put a major dent in a business like this, and this is a business. You know, in my view, that is going to take off as soon as rates drop. But as soon as rates drop, all of the stocks that I invest in, I anticipate a, a strong recovery in so many of these stocks. And so the question is like, which do you like the best out of all of the great opportunities out there? Which one do you think is going to be the best? And of course, in energy, they are benefiting from uh, the declining in prices, right? Uh, declining in prices of this equipment and the tax incentives uh, um, that are coming for these equipment. So, so lots of tailwinds for this equipment. Um, let me go on. So bookings, like I said, they turn into backlog. And, and both bookings and backlog have great number. They, ha they have a great runway, which is why analysts can be confident about future growth and give great numbers for future growth of this company. This is a company um, that does also doesn't even have that many problems with adjusted EBITDA. They're about to turn free cash flow positive. So I am not too concerned about that when I look at the balance sheet. I mean, you, ne you never know. We could see a major drop in demand like we saw for Solar Edge. That could be a thing, but but it's very rare, right? So I, right now, when I look at the balance sheet, I don't, I, I don't think there's a risk for bankruptcy. So as long as long as long as there's no risk for bankruptcy... For my style of investing, that's all I care about. I care about you not going bankrupt. So now, now that I have check, you're not going bankrupt. I want to look at gross margin. I think gross margin is the second most important thing. And on this, unfortunately, um, uh, you know, it's going slightly down from 13% to 12%. And when you look at the 12-month guidance, you know, that gross margin is supposed to go, be going up, not down. And the gap gross margin, because of, because of some accounting shenanigans, which I, I, I didn't I didn't really bother to look into, but but problems with some contract with accounting. Anyways, they have to show gap accounting uh, this quarter at minus 15%. And my guess is, is the reason why the stock is not up off of the back of strong demand is because the market mostly cares about gap. They mostly care about gap accounting. And when they, they see uh, this margin trending down, they're, you know, they're heading for the exits. But, but as, as far as what I care about, I care about non-gap. And non-gap is still... Um, just fine, slightly declining. Of course, I would not like to see this be 12 and then 11 and then 9%. Then that would be a red flag, right? Let's look at the guidance. So very interesting the way they have updated their guidance. So from Q2, they dropped the guidance a little bit. We knew in Q2 they dropped the guidance a little bit. But what you can see is that their guidance here, they're really widening widening it. What they did is they, they broadened the, the guidance. Note they broadened it more to the downside than to the upside. So that's a, that's, that's a negative. But... Um, they, they really don't know whether they're going to be recognized revenue in Q4 here or whether they will recognize it in Q1, right? There's probably a lot of factors that depend on how they recognize their revenue. Um, anyways, I don't need to spend much time on this, but the, the, the guidance is, is roughly in line, roughly in line with what they had said. Even if it comes in a little, in a little bit lower, you're, we're talking about a stock that's, that's growing very fast here. The bookings are great. Like I said, um, bankruptcy is not, not, really, not really a concern. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to do some calculations on valuation. So if we go uh, of the guide and we take the midpoint of the guide and we assume 563 million of, of revenue they're going to do in 2023, and we assume we, we take the, the midpoint of their gross margin, right, f between 15 and 20 percent, I'm, I'm assuming 17 and a half percent midpoint. So we are getting 98 million in gross profit enterprise value. This is a, this is a company that has quite a bit of debt. Um, so I say, that's why market cap is a little misleading. I always use enterprise value, never use market cap. You want to penalize companies that have debt. Uh, STEM has quite a bit of debt, so I'm penalizing it for that. Um, and enterprise value at 1,050, over gross profit that gives you a 10.7. That is expensive. A 10.7 is expensive, but we have to understand the field that this company is in. The f this company is in the same market as Tesla's energy division. 
right? This is this is a very high demand field. That's why we have these valuations that look a little high when you look at these numbers. Now, uh, if you were to look at um, software revenue, which software I maintain is the main reason why most people are in this stock, and it is the main reason um, why I I am having a small position, why I have a small position in the stock, that's because of software. Because we know that on their Athena software, they make 80% margin. And whenever they sell a product, they, they, they put a 20-year contract whenever they install a battery energy storage system at a corporation, um, utility, you name it, they get a long-term contract that's likely to get renewed. So it creates a lot of long-term recurring revenue which is great. So looking at the current recurring revenue that they, they told us, right, I did I took I did 93 million. So at 93 million, 80% gross margin, you're at 74 million. Um, and, and and of course, you take the enterprise value divided by 74 million, you realize that uh, we are at an, uh, 14x. So this is a 14x which is a little expensive again, um, but it's cheaper than, than even even pricier. So the closest thing, as far as monitoring goes, I, I was like, let me let me use Datadog as as a as as somewhat of a comparison because there's no there's no real company you can compare this to. I mean, they're too unique in their field. But if I were to take SaaS, and SaaS is notoriously expensive because high quality recurring revenue is expensive, um, and so Datadog, I did that same calculation. Datadog is at 17x, so cheaper. Um, this company is arguably, in my view, in a space that is earlier on and that is going to be much bigger than the cloud because energy underlies everything we do in the economy. But that's just that's just my view, and and and, and um, you know I think it's pricey compared to a lot of other stocks that I cover in the channel. You know, especially going into next week, I think about Hims, I think about Stoneco, I think about these companies uh, that are also small caps, and when I compare. The numbers I get on these companies compared to STEM, you know, I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, STEM is pretty darn expensive compared to these companies, but it's not a fair comparison because, say, disrupting payment terminals in Brazil is a small thing. Disrupting the electricity market in the United States is a major, major thing. So that's why I always take it with a grain of salt. What's for sure, though, is that STEM is close to the cheapest it's ever been. So if you've, if you've been interested in the stock, in my view, this is a great entry point. No investment advice again. Like I said, 125 million in cash, so I wouldn't worry about bankruptcy again. Um, an investment in STEM, then, in my view, is all about the growth, nothing but the growth. This stock is a growth story. It's all about the growth. If you look at analysts seeking alpha, uh, they're, they're predicting accelerating growth. So year over year revenue growth at 72% they had over the uh, past 12 months. Over the next 12 months forward, analysts are expecting 85%. They're expecting 85% revenue growth. There's only about five businesses that I've covered on the channel that I, that I can count, count on one hand that show these numbers of growth. These numbers of growth are twice what I would consider an excellent stock, right? I have many excellent stocks who grow in the 40-ish percent, and I, I'm all happy about it. This company is growing twice as fast. So again, when you look at the ratios I just showed to you, remember, this is a company that's growing twice as fast than some of the very best companies that I've covered on this channel, right? This is a company that grows, for example, even faster than him, than HIMS, about 30% faster than HIMS, right? grows double what a Mercado Libre grows, grows double what many of the SaaS stocks that I cover on the channel goes, triple some SaaS stocks even, sometimes. Um, this is very likely growing more than twice as fast as Tesla. So this is a high growth stock, high growth stock, almost double what SoFi grows. I'm sorry to be to be repeating myself on this, but it's important to understand that, the, that these businesses that grow this fast are pretty rare. And that's the proposition. So assuming you have 85% revenue growth 2024, and then I'm, I'm assuming the law of our large number kicks in and I'm removing 10% each time. You know, this is not a perfect science. This is back of a napkin uh, math right here. But assuming, so you have 85%, 25, 75, and 65, and 55, and 45, assuming no precipitous drop in demand, which I don't think will happen, because if, if there is to be a precipitous drop in demand, it would be right now with this interest environment. And right now, with this interest environment, this company is growing at 85%. 
right? It makes you wonder how fast we would be growing without the interest rate environment. It'd be well over a double in my view. So if you do gross profit, you can see how you, how, how you get really, really quickly above the market cap. I mean, you get to the point where you add the gross profit of 2023 and 2024 and 2025, and you've exceeded today's market cap. And you're talking about a stock whose market cap is going to be made up in gross profit by 2027, full year 2027, right? So, uh, so, 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 so this is just to show you how quickly these things can scale if those growth numbers are sustained, right? And, and, and when, when, I, when we read, for example, the, the, the report of Tesla, right? Tesla is one of the suppliers of Enphase. When you read the report of, of Tesla, what do we see? We see that the megapacks of Tesla are growing over 100% per year. They're, they're, they're selling them like hotcakes. They, they can't keep them within the factory. They, they get sold, 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 sold. You, you have years of delay to get your hands on any of these. So, 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 to, so to me, you know, if the attach rate continues, if they keep attaching that software on these long-term contracts, the recurring revenue thesis will, will hold, in my view. And the market cap is only 572 million. Over time, this business will be mostly a software business, in my view. And if you read the latest Q3, you saw that we were talking about all the awards that they got for AI, their trading platform, etc. It's This is a software story, in my view. A software story, but unfortunately, we don't see it in the gross profit right now because it's an early story. And in the gross profit right now, that early story is shadowed by the fact that operating in the world of brick and mortars kills profits. I don't want to be in the construction business, but it's a necessary evil. You have to be in the construction business and in the designing business in order to then get the attach rate on your software. So what is my conclusion? Increasing a position in STEM, in, in STEM is tempting. I mean, it's really tempting, tempting. But uh, if you know me and you followed my videos, I've done over 400 videos, you know there are stocks that I like more than STEM, and it's Tesla, and it's Enphase. Enphase is at an all-time low. I mean, as far as since I've been looking at Enphase, it's, uh, it's my, my own personal all-time low of Enphase right now. So, so obviously, I'm going to be compelled to direct my money towards opportunities like Enphase, opportunities like HIMSS. No investment advice. That's just what I do. That's for me. Uh, Tesla right now is at a price that, that you know, I, I, I mean, within a within a twenty percent range from the price of today for Tesla, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we are going to see uh, those prices again in a long time. You know, to me, Tesla will have another step change in valuation. I don't know if it's two years from now, if it's one year from now, but at some point there will be another step change in valuation in Tesla, and then boom. You can't get Tesla that cheap again. And in my view, Tesla is dirt cheap right now. And, and um, you know, you may want to take a, which I, a look at my 2030 video uh, that I did on Tesla, Tesla in 2030. And, and I try to lay out my thesis as to why I think this stock is so cheap. So because of that, because STEM is not uh, living on its own in a vacuum, but STEM is trading in relation with all of the other stocks out there that also have very cheap prices, you know, in my view, I can't justify moving away from my core positions uh, to grow my share in STEM. So that's why for now, I'm not moving, you know, but if, if, if STEM were to stay this cheap and all of the other stocks went up, then obviously I would take another look and, and, and keep adding. But keep in mind, I'm happy with my micro position. I have a micro position. I'm happy with it. And I consider it an option on the future, an option on the future, because if these growths sustain or even accelerate as we drop interest rates, this could be a stock um, that would be explosive, in my view, and, 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 and really a good stock to own. Anyways, not investment advice. This is just entertainment. No investment advice. Please like the video if you liked it. If you enjoyed it, it helps me out. Subscribe as well. It helps me out. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.